What's up guys, it's Paralyzer here, and today we're going to be breaking down the Grounded 1.4 reveal at PAX East. This was about an hour long event, and I'm going to be going through and talking through everything that was in it. Now yesterday I did stream the event, and we talked about it the entire time. Thank you so much for everyone who watched. I think we peaked at about 800 viewers, which is just insane. I've never seen a number like that in my life, and I was absolutely pooping myself. So yes, we are going to be talking about Grounded 1.4 today. This is obviously releasing on April 16th. There was no news of a playtest in today's stream, so we still don't know when that's going to be out, if there is one. But what we do know, as you can see on the screen, is it's the final Grounded update. They did say inside of this, this is the final content update for Grounded, which means that afterwards there'll be updates, but there'll just be bug fixes and stuff. This is the final update that they have planned right now that's going to actually include content inside of the game. This is very sad news, but from everything I've seen in this update so far, it looks like it's going to be um, a pretty goddamn good update, to be honest. So yesterday's breakdown took me about an two hours um, of a stream, so I'm going to try and break it down today in approximately 10 to 20 minutes once I've cut it down. Uh, hopefully not too long, so let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing we see here, as soon as they switch to the gameplay, after about 10 minutes of yappa yappa, is there is a bunch of chairs and files now outside of the kids' case. Nothing major, just a bit more decoration than usual. Now, the first thing you'll notice here is he unlocks the Sour Katanga. Um, if we go back for a second here, um, the devs are using cheats to just spawn stuff in, so that's why they're able to get stuff without, like, crafting benches and stuff. But you'll see it pop up right here. They have the Sour Katanga. This is a version of the Spicy Coltana that is um, going to occur with, I think, every weapon by the sounds of it. They show up another one later, but essentially from what I could gather, there is the Spicy Coltana is the regular version, and then once you get to New Game Plus, you can get these resources to unlock the Sour version, Mint version, and Salty version of the Katana as well, potentially. Uh, they didn't actually specify if there's all four versions of all weapons, but they have the same thing for the Mint Mace. They have a spicy version of the Mint Mace. So it looks like there's going to be all four elemental versions of all of the special weapons. So that would be the Katana, the Morning Star, the Mint Mace, and the Battle Axe. They did show off a fresh Battle Axe as well, or very briefly later into the stream. So there's different elemental versions of all of these weapons. They're still all going to be Tier 3 as far as I can tell. The next thing we see right here when he pauses the game is a little two number right here. Now, this is to do with the New Game Plus feature, which is coming in the update, I believe. This means that they've New Game Plus twice. There's a couple of reasons I think this. Number one is there's a number two there. Um, number two is they pick up some science later into the gameplay. There's a piece of toast in the science, just like the toast in the image here, and that science gives them 1,500. Now, a regular science would give you 500, so I'm guessing if you new game plus once, it goes to 1,000, and then twice, it goes to 1,500. This just makes sense mathematically, and uh, yeah, it looks like they're in new game plus times two, uh, which makes the enemies a lot tougher very clearly, and that's what I can tell from this number. Um, I don't know if the day counter resets when you new game plus, but it looks like it does because they're only on day 15, but we'll have to wait and see if that's actually true or not. And then the host manages to open up the debug menu, which he really wasn't supposed to do. There's a lot of items in here. A lot of these are cut content and some of them are actually new things. So these four things down here, these are the new um, goop things. They pick these up later from killing the special modified, like infused enemies. Not exactly sure what these are for, I'm assuming they're for crafting, but as you can see, you can also get them from the Broodmother, the Mantis, the Wasp Queen, and the Infected Broodmother, one of the most dangerous enemies in the game. You'll also see some new stuff here, because there's one, two, three, four, five ant eggs, and there's two more over here. So there's actually seven ant eggs. This is for the black ant. The One of these is for the red ant. This is for the fire ant. So there's three new ant eggs, and there's these parts here, which look like infected parts. The eye on the ant right here has like purple swirls, and the head of the um, mandible has like a little infected spot. So... We'll talk about this later on, but keep this in mind as a new item. A bunch of the other stuff here is just stuff that's been cut from the game. Not sure what this stuff is. It's like pebbles and stuff. I'm not sure what that is. I've never seen that before. But a lot of the other stuff is just stuff that's been cut. But yes, new ant eggs, which are very strange, as well as the new infected ant parts, which I think will be something we'll talk about later into this video. So the next thing we see right here is the Burgle Rug. There's actually a bunch of rugs in this base. They're adding rugs to the game in the next update. We have a Burgle's face rug on the floor right here. Nothing too crazy. Uh, and then they go and sit in the couch and 
Look at the rug, my guy. That's pouch is not new. Okay. We get a better look right here at the burgle rug on the floor. It does look beautiful. I can't lie. It's a very, very cool looking design object inside of the game. There are also a bunch more rugs, which I'm sure they're going to show off. We have the weevil rug right here on the floor. And there's also a bee one that you can see in the background there. They are very, very cute. Another thing that you're going to see here is the termite organ. This is a very cool thing. I don't know if this is where the Goonies poster came from because the termite organ kind of reminds me of the organ from the Goonies movie. Movie. but regardless they have a termite organ in the game why i don't know it's a cool decorative item i guess you use it and it plays a random song very nice um yes it's a termite king organ i don't know what to tell you we have the little bee rug on the ground as well and then we have this thing out here there's a raw science rug on the ground but the most important thing is the hand grabbing the anvil in front of him. As you can see, this is called the Yoking Station. I believe this is unlocked when you get to New Game Plus, and you're able to use it to upgrade your armor and weapons beyond level 9. So you can get them to level 10, 11. I don't know how, how high it goes, or what you use to upgrade them. I think it's the goop you get from the infused enemies, is what they said, but we'll have to wait and see, because there's also new molars around the yard, so what are they used for? They didn't show that off. God knows. We, we, we've got a lot to find out still. They showed off a lot, but they also missed off a lot so we're gonna have to wait and see so every new game plus iteration you do your gear can go even more and more levels they haven't specified how many iterations of new game plus you can do yet um that's gonna be very interesting to find out if you can go like five new game plus 10 new game plus 100 new game plus unspecified but i can't wait to see and i can't wait to go into the millionth new game plus let me tell you as you can see right there the devs spawn in the fresh edge this is a fresh version of the sour battle axe it's also a new weapon inside of the game which only pops on the screen for a couple of seconds and then we get a spicy weapon here it's the spicy version of the mint mace the wallapino uh yeah that's about it it's it's a spicy mint mace it's interesting because it's not the exact same texture it is slightly different but it, that's exactly right, what I'm it gonna, is here i'm gonna drop this if anyone wants to use the wallapino it's Ooh. a, a spicy version it's a very interesting, very square looking um, version of the Mint Mace, but it is the Mint Mace, I promise, just in spicy version. And then the next thing we notice is in New Game Plus, the flavoring on the rockets changes. So they said all of the different candy things in the yard are gonna change in New Game Plus. So I'm not sure if this is every iteration of New Game Plus or not, but this, for example, has changed the sour rocket into a spicy rocket. So the sour, um, so the spicy packets with the spicy candies in might turn mint. The mint boxes might turn into sour candy boxes. Um, I'm assuming it'll swap just the three candies. It won't involve the salt because there's no like packaging for the salt or anything. But yeah, those three candies seem to be swapping around in different boxes and different packagings. So that'll be cool to see, I guess. Um, it's just a small minor detail, but it's pretty cool. And it just moves around all the different resources in the yard in the later iterations. The next thing we see is the devs running in to a infused enemy. This is the first infused enemy we've seen in the game. And as you can see here, the health bar is massive. These enemies in New Game Plus have a lot more health. This isn't just the infused enemy. All enemies in New Game Plus have way more health, but the infused enemy seems to have even more. And as you can see at the top of the screen here, he has five buffs. He has increased speed, movement speed that is. He has increased attack damage, increased max health, increased attack speed. And then this one here is the increased uh, or the explosive effect, which makes it so every once in a while, the enemy just randomly explodes and does damage in an AOE effect. Um, the other ones that they displayed in this were spicy and sour attacks. So they can essentially do the effects of the spicy and sour staffs where they will do uh, an attack in that sort of general thing. And I think that was the only other two I saw. I will double check as we go through and look at the infused enemies here. But yes, they have five buffs each, the infused enemies. You can find them around the yard randomly. And any boss you fight in New Game Plus will always be infused, uh, which makes them much, much tougher. But you get much better loot from them as well. As you can see here, the devs then find an infused wolf spider. This has movement speed, attack damage, max health, the explosive attack and a sour attack. So he has like a sour staff ability where he attacks like a sour staff. And this thing has a million health points as well and obliterates them also. You can see the sour blasts coming out now. That's from the wolf spider. The devs then use some magic in order to actually kill the wolf spider because they're unable to kill it themselves. And they go and get the host to loot the body. Now, this does indeed give him a few things. First of all, it gives you raw science, a lot of it as well, which probably means that you're going to need a crap ton of raw science in the future in order to purchase a bunch of different stuff, because if this guy is given 3,000, it's got to be used for something. 
Then in the bottom left, you can see the other things it drops, one of which is infused ooze. This is an item which is used for upgrading the items, I believe, or crafting new items. It's hard to say for certain, but that seemed to be what it was for. So as you can he see here, the infused ooze says a non-Newtonian sludge found in average foes that becomes crystallized the more it's kneaded and slapped together in a larger volume. So you're going to need a lot of this in order to do something. I'm guessing it's for upgrading the weapons. We don't know for certain, though. So if you want to head to that last part with the infused ooze, uh, that's one of the items that the uh, infused insects drop, which is used to make the yoking station and some of the new candy infused weapons in New Game Plus. There you go. You uh, use it to make the are... new candy weapons in New Game Plus and using to make the yoking station as well. That's what the infused use is for. And then as you can see, it also dropped a waffle here. There's three different trinkets that are new in the game. Uh, and you can see them just by looking at a piece of raw science in the current version of Grounded. There is a cone shape, a waffle, and like a squiggle. Those are the three objects you see inside a piece of 500 raw science, and those are the three new trinkets. And these seem to have like random effects to them, but I'll let Arik explain that. If you want to look at that cool waffle thing right there. Yes. <laughs> so uh, once that loads up on my screen, uh, so infused creatures drop uh, one of three trinkets, and it's crinkles, cones, or waffles, and... Those are used as trinkets for your character, but they're also the stats on, and effects from the trinkets are randomly generated uh, so that you can have a, a different variety of infused uh, trinkets. There we go. So as you can see here, he has the waffle. Like they said, there's three different trinkets and they have just random effects to them. So this one, for example, has finale stamina surge and summon crit. Um, I'm hoping we can combine these three trinkets, like if we if they have two random effects each and we get all three of them, then technically you should be able to combine them, right? A waffle, a squiggle, and a cone to make like one trinket that's like an ultimate raw science trinket with like six bonuses. That would be pretty cool. Don't know if that'll actually happen, but it would make a lot of sense in my head. This is only a tier two trinket, which is kind of why I think you'll be able to combine them and it'll make some sort of tier three trinket. But yes, this is a new trinket, it has two random buffs, on every single one of them, and A, you get one from killing the infused enemies. This gives you Finale, Stamina, Surge, and Summon Crit, this one in particular, but like I say, it's two random effects. So you could get this exact same trinket again, and it would have two different effects. But you can break these items down to make uh, infused jelly, which you would need to craft the yoking station, and you can... There you go, so you also need to break these trinkets down in order to get infused jelly, which you're going to use to make the yoking station and get the new recipes for these new weapons, like the sour katanga he's holding right now. You, you can break these trinkets down at the uh, super duper, which has an alternate ver variant called the de-duper, and that's when you would deconstruct <laughs> these trinkets to, to get these <laughs> jellies to be able to craft the yoking station in the... In the there you go, so they have a new version of the Super Duper called the d Duper. They didn't really explain if that's a separate machine or if it's built into the Super Duper, but you use it to break down these waffles. So essentially, the Oak Lab gets yet another use of it and another reason why you want to live there. Although, with the things they're adding in this update, you actually might not want to live at the Oak Lab anymore for a certain reason. Next, I get attacked by a Black Ox Beetle, which has sprint speed, increased attack, increased max health, explosive, and a new effect we haven't seen yet. It's a venom attack, so it can hit you and inflict venom, I think. Although they did say something about enemies having an effect where they give off a cloud of gas around them for like poison or potentially just gas damage as well. So those are also effects that they mentioned might exist, but we didn't actually get to see too much in the stream. So now they are inside of the Fire Ant Hill where the giant stone usually would be. They've made the stone disappear in this version and we have the Fire Ant Queen. Now, there is all three fire ant queens F fire red and black you have all three ant queens in this version of the game as you can see here the fire ant queen has multiple options you have the tasty donut sando the poison donut sando and then a third option which is kind of mysterious for now so if you give it the tasty donut sando um it's gonna uh, befriend the fire ant queen you can do this to any of the ant queens as far as i can tell uh, probably won't take the same item for each it's probably different items i would guess because this is a tier three item on a tier three creature 
And if you do do this though, it's going to befriend her and you'll see what happens because they show that in the stream. Um, if you're going to poison her, I assume it's going to kill her, but we don't actually get to see that, so we don't know. And the third option is mysterious. We don't even know what that is yet, but my guess is that it would infect her because that seems to be what the parts are in the dev menu. I think it's going to be a way to infect her using like infected broodmother parts to make um, some sort of infected Sando that's going to infect the queen and... I don't know what's going to happen there, though, because they said there's no new boss fights in this version uh, and you can't actually fight any of the f uh, the ant queens. So God knows what that means, but we'll have to wait and see. So then he feeds him the tasty Sando to befriend the fire ant queen. And as you can see, the fire ant queen is very, very happy and she manages to offer him a baby fire ant pet, a brand new pet. That means there's three new pets in this version of the game. The baby fire ant, the baby black ant, and the baby red ant. You get the gold card instantly when you do discover this. Now, what makes these pets so good? That's a great question. You'll see in a second um, why these are so good, but it's also important to note that because you can new game plus now, if you get these, then you can new game plus. You should be able to keep the pets because you keep all of your like items and builds as far as I'm aware when you new game plus. The only thing that resets is the story but then you can go back to these ant queens and take a different path and it's going to give you something completely different. Like, for example, you can poison them the second time around and then the third time you can pick the third option. That allows you to explore every route and still 100% the game and do all of the different options without making multiple worlds. Right. Notice on my screen, uh, with the new mutation was detected is the ant ambassador. So there's a new so mutation called Ant Ambassador in this version as well, which they don't explain what it does, but I'm assuming there's three tiers, and each tier is for doing one of each of the Ant Queens, so if you do all three, you get it to tier three. You'll also notice the Baby Fire Ant here has 20 slots. Every other pet in the game currently has 10, so that makes these the best pets currently because they have an extra 10 inventory slots on top of just the regular 10 that a pet would have. Befriending them also gives you these Fire Ant Queen pheromones. As you can see right here, the Fire Ant Queen Pheromone, a pheromone gem from the Fire Ant Queen. Now, it's important to note that it says gem because the gems are the items that were going to be used in order to craft the Fire Ant Queen armor and the staff. Those little blue gems in the top of the staff, um, which is technically green in the, in the trailer, but it was blue originally and blue in the armor as well. These are probably items you need in order to craft the Fire Ant Queen armor and the Fire Ant Queen staff. And anything else Fire Ant Queen related is my guess, but we don't know that for certain. We'll have to wait and see. Then, as you can see right here, they have teleporters uh, or telepotties are now in survival, which is crazy because I spent the last like three days building a massive zipline tower to prepare for this new update. And now they're just going to unlock teleporters and teleport across the map. These things are probably going to be pretty expensive to make, though. I'm not too sure. They don't exactly show it off. But yeah, you can teleport across the entire map now, which is why I said it's not too important to live at the oak tree anymore. You can live anywhere and just teleport to wherever you want to be in the game. So next, they start the assistant manager boss fight. And as you can see, every boss is infused in New Game Plus. The assistant manager's effects here, movement speed, attack damage, maximum health, the explosive one, and spicy attacks like a spicy staff. I mean, look at that health bar. I know they're on four player, but even still, this is like a 5x health bar minimum, maybe even more. It's kind of ridiculous how much health it has. It's a good thing the assistant manager is pretty easy. I can't imagine how difficult this will be against like an infected broodmother. It's going to be ridiculous. Now, this boss fight, I mean, it's the assistant manager, it's pretty chill. What's different, though, is, as you can see, the lasers are all out of sync. Rather than the top two being synced together, they're now completely out of sync, and they're much faster than before. As you can see here, look, look at how fast those lasers are going around, and, yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. You'd have to jump to actually hit the top laser. You could just stand still when it goes over you. But very, very difficult to revive in this fight now and just very difficult to survive in general. It's definitely a lot harder, uh, although I would say that these guys literally have some of the worst gear in the game. Some of them don't even have armor on, so it, they're making it look a lot harder than it actually is, that's for sure. And another thing worth noting right here is, as you can see, they managed to get an infused Taze T as well. So this guy has movement speed, attack damage, max health, the explosive attack thing. And I don't know what that one on the end is with the explosions. Um, I'm not too sure. Something to do with maybe dropping bombs or being resistant to bombs. I have no idea, but I think that's the one the assistant manager actually had as well. But yeah, you can get infused summons during the fight. This is a problem. Imagine if you're fighting the Wasp Queen 
infused, obviously, in New Game Plus, and she summons an infused drone. I think I'm actually just going to quit the game at that point. Like, there's no point playing. If you're on woe difficulty and you get an infused wasp drone, it's GG. You will not be able to kill the queen. You just won't. Um, this does worry me. Hopefully they resolve something in the playtest because it's going to be a huge issue otherwise. The wasp drone in the wasp queen fight is going to be beyond broken and I'm going to call it right now before it even happens. And then as you can see here, they finally find some raw science. And just like I said, there's a piece of toast in the science which makes it look a lot different, but it's also the same toast that we had in the menu earlier, and it gives him 1500 as opposed to 500, which again, I think is because they're in New Game Plus times two, so it's double, it's tripled up, essentially. New Game Plus one would give you 1000, and New Game Plus two gives you 1500. And then as you can see, the sandbox is yellow, yet again, because they New Game Plus, it changed the color of the sandbox. You might see the oak tree at some point be yellow leaved as well. That's again, because they're in New Game Plus, it changes the color of the leaves on the trees as well. So it's kind of like a seasonal thing in a way um, by going to New Game Plus, but not really. It kind of just changes the way the yard looks. In New Game Plus, there's also random placements of milk molars and raw science. Now, obviously the raw science you can use in the shop to purchase stuff. We don't know what the milk molars are for yet, so we'll find out at some point, I guess. They didn't really say what the new milk molars will be for, whether you can upgrade more stuff or you use it to infuse your weapons. They didn't mention it, but we'll find out eventually. Then they finally make it to the door. And as you can see here, there are four monitors now. There's a lot less monitors than there was before. Um, and you're going to need to open this door by killing the three bosses and doing the Java-matic event. So when you go into New Game Plus, it's going to reset all of your story progress. You're going to do all the story again. And once you beat the Java-matic, the Broodmother, Mantis, and Wasp Queen, you'll be able to open the door. Now, we don't know what's behind the door because they don't show it off. But it does beg the question, why don't you have to beat the infected Broodmother to go to New Game Plus? It kind of makes sense. It's the hardest boss, but there must be a reason for it. Maybe behind the door is another door that has a monitor with the infected Broodmother on. That would be funny. Hilarious, in fact. But I don't think that's the case. I think you're going to open the door and you're going to get some sort of cutscene and different ending, potentially, that's then going to roll you around into New Game Plus, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm very excited regardless. However, they did say there's no new bosses in this version of the game, so don't expect to open this door and see a boss fight, as that's very, very, very unlikely. ...grounded, and you'll be able to have infinite loops of New Game Plus progressively making the game harder. Infinite loops of New Game Plus, they say. So you're telling me I'm going to go to New Game Plus times 100? I don't know if I believe that, but we'll have to wait and see. I will try and go as many loops as I possibly can in my game until my game breaks. Um, it's going to be impossible, I'm going to be honest, but we'll see. We're also going to be introducing Tier 4 weapons in this update. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tier 4 weapons, which is crazy, by the way. Um, I'm assuming something they didn't talk about in this is the Mint Sword that was in the trailer. It's got to be a tier 4 weapon, right? It's unique. The difference with all the other weapons they've shown so far is their variations and takes on all the other weapons. The Mint Sword could be a take on the Katana, although it does look very, very different, so I'd be kind of surprised. I think it's going to be the first tier 4 weapon in the game, but we will see. Um, someone did comment a while ago as well in my 1.4 prediction, I think, that it would be cool if it was a Milk Molar Sword that you could infuse with a bunch of Milk Molars to make it more and more powerful, which with the New Game Plus feature would mean you'd keep New Game Plusing, and you'd collect more Milk Molars, and you'd keep infusing a sword and make it more and more powerful with with, like special abilities and stuff. I think that would be sick. Will it happen? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, shout out to Clobril on Twitter as well, who's also made a little post here that says, Grounded Fully Yoked update revealed, new game plus, which we already mentioned, Fire Red and Black Ant Queen, infused bugs, new molars, new achievements is another thing that's coming, which I didn't really touch on, but I'm not really bothered. It's just new achievements. It's cool. Don't get me wrong. I'll complete them. Uh, ability to upgrade gear past level 9, new mutations, which is that Ant-Bassador one that they said, they didn't say what it did, but there's an Ant-Bassador mutation, hopefully you just equip it and the ants don't attack you anymore. Speaking of ants, the pet fire ant, which I didn't mention, gives you a hauling strength buff, we didn't see how, by how much, because he never picked up like grass planks or weed stems, but it does give you a hauling strength buff inside of the game. New weapon variants, secret door, um... Final large update to Grounded, yeah, the final update to Grounded. Another thing worth mentioning here is the physical version of the game being released, the fully yoked edition. They're releasing copies of the game 
And another thing they're releasing is the Collector's Edition. Now, if you want um, a copy of this, uh, it's going to set you back 125 US dollars or 40 US dollars for the actual game. Um, and this is everything you get inside of these Collector's Editions. I'm still uncertain on whether I'm going to buy one or not. We'll have to wait and see. But they have a little picture frame here with a bunch of picture cards you can put inside of it. There's some stickers. There's a art book. There's a couple of sweatbands. There's these figurines, which look very, very cool. There's a bunch of dice. There's a tape that's a USB. It's not an actual cassette tape. There's a couple of discs that are going to play the grounded music. Uh, a copy of the game and like a spacer tin, I guess, that looks very similar to the spacer, which everything is going to come in. It looks pretty cool. I can't lie. It's pretty expensive also, but I'll consider it. Maybe I buy it and do an unboxing. We will see. But that's everything in 1.4 that was shown off and everything we know so far. I think I covered absolutely everything. I don't think there's anything I missed. If I did miss anything, I'm sure people will mention it in the comments down below. Thank you, as I said, for all the support on the live stream. I will be streaming Grounded when the update does drop. I can't wait to play it some more. And um, yeah, I'll be streaming on both YouTube and Twitch, but I do stream on Twitch every day playing uh, when I don't play Grounded, like playing other games. Uh, I'll see you all in the next Grounded video. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, please do leave a like on it. Uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your day.